Hallio, my ascendant brothers and sisters, welcome to your May 2024 Astro Taroscope with me, Raphael, from Radiant Reality. It's an absolute pleasure to have you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for joining me. Quick note, these readings are for your sun, moon and ascendant sign. I don't know why I'm smiling so much. Uh, for your sun, moon and ascendant sign. Uh, remember, if you're only going to watch one, make sure it's for your ascendant. It's going to be the most accurate for you on that day-to-day -day level. With that said, remember, they are general readings. Use your own discernment and I am using whole sign tropical western astrology for those of you that would like to know and if I ever don't mention the dates or the degrees of the transits etc you will be able to find that all in the description box below before we start as always I would like to bless my decks of cards with all forms of love light peace prosperity and abundance and I pray that the messages that come through are ultimately clear and concise and they help you on your path to your highest vibrational good so the first transit that I want to explore for you is on the first of the month, Mars comes into the sign of Aries. Now, Mars is action, energy, passion, excitation, war, challenge, conflict, um, but it's also, you know, the energetic stuff as well, right? And what I will say to you is the power in this transit is pretty special for you because the 11th house is a very lucky house, right? And the fact that you've got a, a fire sign there and also you've got... Um, uh, Mars coming into its rulership, this is a strong Mars, right? But it's a single, fo it comes into the single focus of Aries that allows you to direct your determination towards what it is that you want to, like what it is that you want to create. This allows for luck, success and manifestation to happen. Uh, what it also shows you uh, or should I say what it also shows up here with is the energy and the power to make changes in your life that have because the ninth house is a very future orientated house as well right um, this is like the, the shorter term sort of uh, you know future that you're heading towards in the now but this shows you how to expand your life in some way uh, it will probably see you make more headway on a goal of your choosing in the next five to six weeks uh, that Mars is here in this sign of Aries uh, than maybe you have in in all of the other time right it's going to bring a focus here Mars for you also rules your fourth house of home family property there's something deeply personal about breaking out of a rut here when it comes to a home situation. The ninth is also studies, which means that there's, if you've had any fear around uh, learning or teaching, all of that stuff, you're removing what is superfluous and finding that the true knowledge and wisdom in the subject area or subject matter that you're studying or teaching is available to you now. You're starting to really understand things at a much deeper level. And for some of you, this this might even be changing your entire sort of world view on things as well. This could also see like maybe you get more proactive about travel. Remember the ninth house is foreign travel, uh, distant lands, all of that kind of stuff. This could see you uh, opening up to more travel. Uh, it could be energetic and passionate travel. Maybe for some of you as well, you're traveling to right the Aries in the Mars in, in uh, Aries in the ninth a place of your heritage, the fourth house, because Mars rules Scorpio as well. So you could be traveling to a place or a land of your heritage in some way. For this, you've got the Three of Swords, so potentially saying goodbye to something here with the Queen of Pentacles. Okay, so Queen of Pentacles, usually an Earth sign woman, Taurus, Capricorn, Virgo. Um, you've got this with the Seven of Pentacles. This could really highlight to you, actually, uh, where you know, studying, learning, or moving forward in some way. Um, maybe it puts you, you know, there might be things or people that you have to release in order to go in the direction that you're hoping to go. What this, I feel like this means is you're going to start on a journey over the course of this Mars transit that is going to separate you out from some people. And that can be really painful, right? Um, so I'll give you a really good example. I had a really good friend. I mean, like, we were really some of the tightest, like, one of the tightest people I've ever known. And uh, circa 2018, we kind of diverged paths. And it was because I could see that 
you know, and it's not to say like, you know, everybody has things in their lives that they're on Groundhog Day with. It wasn't so much that, that that was the bother for me. It was just the fact that there was no forward momentum or movement or no ambition to sort of move beyond where we were when we were teenagers. And it's kind of like, OK, you know, there comes a point where you have to kind of say, you know, we're adults, like, let's move forward. And I just couldn't see that from this person. And for that reason, I was like, OK, you know what? it's time for us to part ways. It was really, really challenging. And maybe there's an element of this. Remember with the Mars, wherever Mars goes, it gives us the ability to cut away or to remove or to sever what is stopping us from growing in that area. So, you know, Mars is kind of like the, the garden, you know, the garden hoe that you use to kind of really get it out. And look, right, look at this. You've got that literal garden hoe and the guy on the Seven of Pentacles. So you could be weeding your life in some regard and maybe even weeding out your belief structures and systems to say okay I no longer believe this and if that sets me apart from or sees me not connecting to people as I used to then so be it all right for your the next transit that I want to look at on the 16th of May Mercury is going to move into the sign of Taurus. So at this point, I mean, you already had a stellium, but now the stellium really sort of ramps up a gear. You've got Jupiter still in Taurus, you've got Uranus still in Taurus, you've got the Sun in Taurus at this time, and you've got Mercury. That's four planets. Mercury comes into your career sector, immediately bring in a lot more focus, a lot more communication and speed to this area, potentially ramps up the money that you're making from and through your career as well. Um, money rules your money rules mercury rules your money and your finances but it also rules the gains such as finances that you get from your business and it comes into the 10th house so uh, the you know the salary that you're getting paid um, the, the revenue that your business is generating so this could be a nice cash boost but it will see you formulating and sharing ideas and getting ahead sales could pick up for you at this time especially if you've got your own business uh, commissions if you work on commissions in your job where you're employed by somebody else that could do really well it's also possible for you that you can find a lot of your conversations at this moment in time are around work and career and they're really exciting to you right especially because it, like there's a lot of focus around future plans and goals for you at this time for this you've got the seven of wands you know there might be somebody trying to rain on your parade sorry to say with the four of cups don't get emotionally sidetracked by this leo really really important if someone tries to piss on your fireworks move the fireworks out of the way right and then you've got the full card which is new things people new things people places and uh, experiences all coming in through the career and with the four of cups here you might be pleasantly surprised at what some of these new things places people or energies are that come in here uh, so i actually really like this for you i think you know even if it is uh, potentially a little bit more challenging because the seven of wands it's like there's someone that just can't be happy for you do you know what I mean and, and maybe this forces you to be a bit more secretive maybe this forces you to kind of be really selective about who you're sharing what with on the 19th of the month Mars is going to conjunct the North Node, right? So what this the North Node is an amplification point. This is a very special transit moment because the North Node is in Mars, right? And the North Node is in Mars's sign and it's Mars that's conjuncting that North Node. There's something fated around uh, having to do with foreign travel or affairs or people. Opportunities could come through other people, through foreign cultures or distant lands. Um, maybe for some of you, you're invited to speak at a local college or university. Um, maybe uh, a, a religious or spiritual sort of order or faculty or whatever calls upon you to come and sort of deliver some information. It may even be amplifying matters and legal matters and proceedings. That's possible. Uh, the North Node is, is a lot more positive than the South Node. 
Personally, I see the North Node more as a Jupiterian influence, so it's amplifying something. It could also be that it amplifies your own ability to teach, not just to be a student, but also to teach, to disseminate knowledge. Whatever case it might be, um, it's a wonderful energy of advancement and it doesn't show up in the way that you expect, right? So I am curious about this one because whenever you, like the North Node, and I was saying this in the Cancer video, the nodes are kind of like the full card, right? They have a very full card energy about them. As the ninth is also publishing, for some of you, this could be a drive to create a book or a blog or something of that nature. For some of you, it could literally be something like a book deal, right? Um, even, uh, it could even see you getting serious about what you have to share with the world or more serious about what you have to share with the world. For this, you've got the four of wands, so good news on its way with the Knight of Pentacles that comes from a distance, right? That comes from overseas, that comes from abroad or something or someone that is considered foreign to you and with the Page of Cups. Your creative ideas and endeavors, the things that you're putting out into the world, the things that you're planning to put out into the world have really, really good results showing up for you at this time. I love, love, love this. I just, yeah, I just feel like it's, it's really nice. The other thing that I'll say to you here as well, um, the Four of Wands represents the, the, it is actually an Aries energy, and coupled with the Knight of Wands, this could see you connecting with or reaching out to uh, places of your origin, right? So if you're, you know, whatever those might be, lands of land of heritage kind of stuff, again, could be showing up here. Connections with people that live at a distance. Uh, maybe even you exploring connections uh, of, you know, overseas and all of that kind of stuff. Either which way, I think you will be very, very pleasantly surprised by this one. Um, but I do feel like you will be surprised at what it is um, and how it shows up. So another way that you could see that triplet as well, you could literally be um, in a good way, but you could be breaking away from the yoke of the family. All right. And then on the 26th of the month... So Venus is going to be in Gemini at this point. The Sun... Um, the sun will be in, in Jupiter, uh, in Jupiter. the sun will be in G Gemini at the time, but this is what we want to look at, right? So Jupiter comes into the sign of Gemini. This is your 11th house. It immediately sets up a conjunction to Venus and they immediately start to trine Aquarius, right? This is a big deal in so many ways. This is across your 11th and your 7th houses. Fated partnerships, right? Opportunities to work with people, potentially important or powerful people at that one-to-one -one level, or potentially working within groups, uh, maybe doing some form of consultancy. All of these things show up for you at this time. Now, Jupiter is benefactors. It is people that can help us, people that can assist us, people that are higher up, bosses, uh, you know, bosses of bosses, you know, or maybe even sort of dignitaries, because Jupiter is, you know, it's kings and queens, you know, heads like CEOs, bosses, all of that kind of stuff is very Jupiterian. Or teachers, mentors and gurus and coaches will show up as uh, Jupiter as well. Jupiter the greater benefic, Venus the lesser benefic, in a conjunction, in the house of benefactors, people that can help you, future goals, plans, dreams, aspirations, higher aspirations for your future in your life. This is also, um, so Jupiter will be there for like literally the next year, Venus not so much, but the way that the Ju the way that Jupiter comes into the sign of Gemini, I feel like this is very very lucky. I feel like it's very beneficial because it's immediately connecting with Venus. It's going straight into a trine with Pluto, which means there is big help, big support that helps you get some kind of big advancement moving forward. This is a biggie, right? It's a once in twelve kind of deal, right? Because it takes Jupiter a whole year to move through a sign. In the 11th, which is great for a gazillion reasons, remember your 11th is also friendships, group associations and connections. And I actually see this more of amplifying your reach because it shows up in some tangible ways, right? And in that trying to Pluto, 
This could be a new relationship forged that is of a business kind, of a friendship. Maybe if you're single, this could also be that kind of relationship. Um, I, at any rate, like business, work, communications, finances, and pleasure are all going to be intertwining at this time. And what makes this even more powerful for you is the eleventh house is the money, the gains, and the 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 worth and the value that you get out of your career. Right. So this is all pretty big stuff at this point. Especially because Venus is there making her presence known. Pluto's going to be retrograde at this time. So what you do with it is very much going to be up to you, right? But just know that there are a lot of, there's a lot of inescapable expansion here. Uh, and I will say, just make sure it's for all of the right reasons, right? Because the, the, the 11th house, this is one of the houses that can see you go viral for something. Make sure it's for the right reasons. With this, you've got the King of Wands. So you literally, in some way, shape or form, man, woman, however you identify, you show up as yourself. There is a lot to do with visibility here as well. You've got this with the Strength card. A Leo person will absolutely feature for you in regards to this. And you've got this with the Two of Swords. There's potentially a reconciliation here as well. For those of you that are single and looking, uh, you know, this could be a reconciliation with an old partner. Um, it's also possible that you could see someone in a new light. And if you're uh, partnered, married or in a long term commitment, this will see you working out some of the challenges or the kinks that you've had within your relationship. OK, uh, another way that you could see this, that strength card with the, the King of Wands, this is you having the courage to put yourself out there in some regard, right? Having the courage to allow yourself to be seen or to get out into the world. For, so if you are interested in taking my tarot course, enrollment is open at the time that I'm putting this video out. Enrollment will close on the 30th of April. I only ever hold 20 up to 20 spaces and sometimes I even, you know, I'll run the course with a lot less. But that's because I want to get to know you. I want to make sure that I can support you in the best possible way and really push you forward to do what is absolutely possible, right? Um, you get bonus videos. You spend 12 weeks with me literally every Sunday you'll have a live class where you interact with me and the class we go through the cards I'm going to teach you spreads I'm going to teach you uh, and you're going to get live client demos you're going to get trust me I've packed as much as I can into this course I love it I'm super proud of it and I love to teach it it's one of the best things that I can do and you know I was just talking about Leo teaching well this is me fulfilling that role finally right so uh, if you are interested and you want to learn tarot you want to learn to read like me you want to learn and to do it like Rafi, uh, you know where to be, all right? So you can find that on the link in the description box below. For your lunations, on the 8th of the month, we've got a new moon in your career sector in that 10th house, in that most visible part of your chart, all right? So you get a fresh start here. Remember, you've got to lean into it. You have to do something with it, right? It's like any transit. You've got to do something with it in order for it to kind of work out in your favor. Yes, things sometimes happen on their own. The universe has a plan. Um, but if you really want to maximize it, you've got to do something with it. And it, this one in particular is a very nice new move. For this, you've got the gate 46 and serendipity. Something will find you. Uh, or you will make a happy accident discovery. I've already had one of these recently. Um, it was just like completely mind blown because I was like, holy crap, I've never seen this anywhere else before. So really excited about that. Um, the other thing with this card as well, it's really about being in the right place at the right time. And then on the 23rd of the month, you will have a fifth house, full moon. So Jupiter will be in there. But then the sun will be in there as well, right? So sun and the moon are opposites in your fifth house of pleasure, joy, romance. This could reveal a secret admirer, but it could just as easily see you saying, you know what? I want to party. I want to have fun. I want to have more pleasure. I want to have more enjoyment in my life. And you're just really going for it, right? So the new moon is at 18 degrees, that Taurus new moon. And your full moon is at two degrees of Sagittarius. Um love that right and so for your your full moon 
don't don't get too hung up on the opinions of others right let people have their thoughts their feelings let them be who they are and do what they want to do and all the all that stuff um because quite frankly it's got nothing to do with you how they see you is literally nothing to do with you um but what i will say to you with uh the, <laughs> the gate 17 and opinions some of what you do even if that's just which it feels to me like it, this is you having the blast right having the time of your life maybe you're really enjoying yourself and there's like everybody looking at you like fuck them enjoy to your heart's content if they're gonna look give them a damn reason all right with that said i wish you an abundance of all of that good stuff have a fantastic uh, month ahead let me know in the comments how it shapes up take care and i'll see you soon